We know Winston good by now. So we're ready for action. <laughs> Check one. Yeah, I believe so. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. I greet you in the name which is above every other name. The name at which every knee must bow in heaven, in earth, and in the underworld. But Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Name above all names. Hallelujah. So I want to thank the leadership for taking the risk to bring me back a second time. <laughs> but I really left uh, feeling really fulfilling last time I was here. It was a very joyful experience for me. And um, it's, for me, one of the most important things I can do is to talk about Jesus. Amen. To talk about how we can come to know him better. To talk about how we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because I'm not talking from what I, I've heard somebody say. I'm talking from my own personal experience. Amen? Amen? So if you have a testimony to give, if God has done something in your life, just share it. Whatever you have, share it. Amen? Amen? The kingdom of God is like beggars who have found bread, just telling other beggars where to, where to get bread. And Jesus is the living bread. Amen? Amen? Give Jesus some praise in the house. Give him some praise in the house. Right? Now, now, today's, today's topic is receiving God's gift. All right. God wants to give you his own life wants to give you that own life. But we've got some problems. We've got some challenges. You see, some of us, when we were born, from the moment they announced to us that we were, mommy is having a baby, we had, maybe they didn't want us. So rejection started to set in one time. We started to pick up all kind of baggage from small. Then they may have called you some kind of Idiot, foolish, stupid, or something. Wounds. As a teenager growing up, you pick, we pick up all kinds of things along the way. Everybody has two suitcases. One with blessing and one with trials. One with a lot of hang-ups and idiosyncrasies. So a lot of people have all kinds of things that they're traveling with. Sometimes good things, sometimes not so good things. Things they pick up from mommy, pick up from daddy, pick up from their community, pick up from the internet, pick up from TV, pick up from books, from movies, from the radio, from music. People are loaded with all kinds of junk. And if God wants to give us something, and we are already filled and loaded up, We can't receive what God has for us because we're already loaded up. No, I like, I'm a very simple bush boy from a Remo. I like, I like provision. Especially dashing, Edo's, a little green fig on the side. Saltfish with a little garlic, tomato, and onions. <laughs> All right. Now, if you give me that, if, and a little bit of um, uh, watercress on the side. All right? And a nice cool glass of coconut water. Now, if God would have said, Winston, you know, I really love you, son. I know you're hungry. I can see, I can see your ribs. <laughs> but I want you to have the best meal that I know you love. I have a nice hot dashing. All right? With everything that you like. And he would present that to me. Ask our sister Dow to give it to me. And sister Dow can say, well, Brother Winston, the Lord said, he wants you to have this. I'm already filled up. I can't receive it. But if I really want that, and I value that, I have a choice to, to drop everything so that I can receive what God has for me. That is what this seminar is all about. This is what this week is all about. You see, when we pick things up, when you pick things up, from small we begin to pick things up. Rejection. All kinds of wounds. This is what happens to us. Rejection. Embarrassment. 
They don't love me. They don't like me. Husband unfaithful. Wife unfaithful. Children using obscene language against me. My boss ain't like me. All kinds of wounds we pick up. Now, if God wants to pour his spirit in us, in this state, where's the water? <laughs> if God were to pour all his blessings upon us, it's going to fall out. So that's why tonight is so important. Tonight is important because we begin to face the brokenness of ourselves and we confront the evil of our lives and we, we want to repent. We want to say, Lord, I want a different life. That's why I love the Life in the Spirit seminars, you know. Life in the Spirit seminars guaranteed to get you into the presence of God, to straighten your life out so that you could be one with God. So this is what happens in this Life in the Spirit seminar. In this Life in the Spirit seminar, you've come with all your woundedness, all your brokenness, and you give your heart to Jesus Christ. St. Paul says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Do I hear amen in the house? Yes. So this is what this seminar is all about. To position you in Christ. Hey, forget I had the heart of it. <laughs> oh my goodness. So that when God wants to fill you with his very presence. Hallelujah. You can hold it. You know sometimes people do the seminar and in a few months time they're back to square one because they didn't take the time to allow God to do his work. So this is no time for halfway repenting and halfway turning around. This is a time to give all to Jesus. Amen? Amen. So, we're receiving God's gift. We're preparing ourselves. Now, in John chapter 3, 37 and 38, Jesus says, if anyone thirsts, if anyone thirsts, sometimes people do this seminar for the wrong reason. Your boyfriend say to you, your girlfriend say to you, if you don't do this seminar, we're done. We're done. <laughs> that ain't no reason to do no seminar. Amen? Amen. Jesus says, if anyone thirsts, Thirsty for truth, thirsty for God, thirsty for real love, thirsty for, to find out what your true destiny is, what your true position in Christ is. You're thirsty for that. That's why we're here. We want more of God. Do I hear amen in the house? Yeah. That's what we want. Lord, we want to know. Some of us, I'm 53 years old. I don't know how many more days I have, weeks, months. I don't know. I don't want to waste any time fooling around outside of the purpose of God. I want to know I am thirsty for truth. I want to be where God wants me to be. I don't want to be wasting time somewhere else outside of the will of God. Do I hear amen? amen. So, Jesus says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come. And let him who believes in me drink. How many drinkers we have in the house tonight? Like, you didn't come to drink? We are all, we've come to drink. That's why on the day of Pentecost, the people said the disciples were, they were drunk. But didn't, they didn't understand, we are not drunk on wine and scotch and all that. We are drunk, they were drunk on the Holy Spirit. Because he who the Son set free is free indeed. When freedom hits you, everything changes. Amen? Amen? Amen. When freedom hits you, everything changes. Takes on new meaning. Takes on new purpose. You're not afraid of your friends anymore. You're not ashamed to be identified as a Christian anymore. You will do anything for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Now, on top of that, Jesus says... 
out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Mm, 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 mm. You'll become so productive, you wouldn't be dry like a crick's biscuit. You'll be given life. You'll be giving life to people wherever you go. Do I hear amen? amen? Irrigating the world. Wherever you are in your office or wherever, in school or wherever, you, your whole life will, 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 be a, will be like a river running through the dry, arid places to bring life and beauty in the name of Jesus. Amen? amen? So today, what this seminar is about is to try to help you turn away from everything that is not compatible with the Christian life. If you go into a gas station, there are certain things you got to do. Amen? Amen? You can't do what? You have to take off your cell phone. You can't go striking matches in a gas station, playing you're going and smoke. Because you can blow up the whole place. There are some things that go with other things. There are some things that are not compatible with the Christian life. And if we, 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 we can't fool ourselves thinking, well, we'll go down this road because Jesus understands. Amen? Amen? When, listen, when your eyes are open and you begin to see the beauty of Jesus, we will, with joy, drop all the junk that we've been carrying for all these years. You see, some people, all they know is the junk. This is their comfort. Well, this is my comfort. One man told me, well, everybody must have a vice. I said, no, brother, you know what a vice is? When a vice holds you, when a man is doing work in his, his workshop and he wants something to remain firm and he can't move, what do you do? You put it on a vice. That's what you want? Something to hold you? You can't stop smoking, or you can't stop drinking, or you can't stop liming, you can't stop fornicating, you can't stop adultery, you can't stop thiefing, you can't stop being dishonest, you can't stop stretching the truth. All of us are all kind of sins, you know, all kind of things. But when we see the beauty of Jesus, oh man, it can't compare with the junk that we've been carrying. We're glad to drop it. Amen? Amen? Amen. So when we repent, it's a happy experience. When you, have to, when you have to beg people to stop, you have to stop cursing because Jesus loves you. When you have to do that, you know that, that person has not yet embraced the love of God. Do I hear amen? amen. So this is final preparation. Today is an important day. To help prepare you for Saturday. You're going to have the, the praying over on Saturday. When God going to hug you up and kiss you. And breathe his life into you. And make you new. Make you productive. Make you into a worshiper. Make you into a minister. Make you into someone that he can rely on. Somebody who is empowered. Somebody who is strong. Somebody who can make a difference. There's so many Few warmers in the church who just sit there. Like one brother says, there was a time when we, when we used to praise God until your hair came out of your curlers. He said, <laughs> but he says, look at you now. You just sit there with your wigs on. <laughs> so, this seminar, <laughs> this seminar is to help us prepare well. To prepare well. Amen? Amen? Tell the person next to you, prepare well. Amen. That's what we're talking about. Because your preparation will depend, the, the, the end product will be as a result of your preparation or lack thereof. Amen? Amen? That's what we're talking about. So, we want to give you some concrete steps. Right? So that you will be sure of where you're going and what you're doing. Because sometimes church people can be vague and use all kinds of flowery language to describe what you have to do. We're telling you plain and simple. We're not confusing the language, though what the indelectable modality of the visible and invisible. We're not into that. One, one monk in the Alps told Jesus appeared to him and says, Who do you say I am? He said, Let me find my notes. He said, Though what the indelectable modality of the visible and invisible. Jesus said, They're talking about me? <laughs> So at this point in the seminar, we are assuming that you have embraced Jesus as the Lord of your life. Amen. That you've made that decision. That you're not fooling around, but you are sure that you want Jesus. As a matter of fact, you don't just want him, but because of the, the, the love of God, the first seminar, salvation, the second seminar, 
new life the third step by now if you have not yet made up your mind well I, I, I don't know I don't know so we assume at this point that your relationship with Jesus is intact that you're saying yes Jesus yes Jesus yes Jesus take control of my life take control of everything come into my heart come into my mind come transform me Jesus you're my Lord Jesus you're my Savior I love you I need you oh you're yo <laughs> amen, amen. we're Trinidadian we're Trinis Trinis talk to Jesus in Trini language Jesus you're sweet amen your relationship with the Holy Spirit. We learn tonight, welcome Holy Spirit. You know they sing that in the prayer meeting alone. When you're going home, you're singing it too. Holy Spirit, stay with me. Holy Spirit, journey with me. Holy Spirit, I need you. Teach me to pray. Teach me to love. Teach me to serve. Holy Spirit, give me the energy. Give me the inspiration. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. You're, dis- you're, establishing, you're establishing a relationship with the Holy Spirit. So, in our church, we say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen? Amen. So the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, is, is that awareness God places into our spirits where we become conscious of wrongdoing in our lives. All of a sudden we realize, hey, I have to stop that. I've got to stop that. I, how can I, I can't continue doing that. Nobody has to tell you. Amen? Nobody has to tell you all of a sudden. You see, because God wants to give you the fullness of life. John 10, 10. I gave you that scripture last time I was here. The thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full or more abundantly. You know what is when people hear abundantly? The first thing they think about is money. But God wants more than just that for us. God wants you to have a joy that even when your money done, the joy is still there. I, amen. I hear amen for that one. <laughs> hmm? Right. So, for me, the seminars are very exciting. I could never get fed up of, of, of a life in the spirit seminar. Some people who have done a seminar 10 years ago and every, every year they say, well, it's, the same, it's not the same seminar. Yet. Every seminar is different. Because God is so beautiful it's like a wonderful rose or flower. Any angle you look at it, you see a new set of beauty. I'm not hearing you. Yeah. Any angle you look at it, you say, oh, look at the texture and the beauty and the, oh, the contrast of the colors. Oh, 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 oh. Some people eat the same food every week, but they don't get fed up of it. But they get fed up of, 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 of praising and worshiping God. One man told me, why you all keep terrorizing God like that? Carnival day, I'm going on the road with my guitar to praise God. He said, where you going? I feel to mash up that guitar. He said, well, only terrorizing God. I said, me terrorizing God. And I'm worshiping God. I'm praising God. I don't, he said, well, only asking the man for things. I'm asking the man for things. I said, I mean, asking him for nothing. I'm just telling him how great he is. Amen? Amen. Yeah, that's what they feel Christians do. We just come to church and ask God for things. And we're afraid to go to hell. We're not afraid to go to hell. We're not going there. Amen? Amen. And those who are throwing stones at us, better watch out. Because I understand there's a lot of room down there. <laughs> and the last time I heard is that the air condition units break down. They don't function down there at all. <laughs> now, in order to receive the new life that God is offering us, we must turn away from things which block our relationship with God and accept Jesus as Lord. No, one of the war cries of the church is Jesus is Lord. That's a loaded statement, you know. Jesus is Lord is not just talk, you know. When we say Jesus is Lord, what we mean is Jesus is the center of our lives. Jesus dictates what's going on in our lives. Jesus is in charge of our lives. Do I hear amen? Yeah. Amen. Some, bro- some men say, oh, I am free to do exactly as my wife tells me. <laughs> well, then Jesus is not, tr- is not Lord of your life. Your wife is the Lord of your life. We need to be very careful about how we deal with the lordship of Jesus. Because he's going to ask you things. So what do you think about that girl that you're dealing with? Isn't she a married person? Yes, but she's separate. God will start, the Holy Spirit will start talking to you about stuff. 
The Lordship of Jesus is serious. Amen? Amen. So all the things that block you and are hindering you from coming to God, this week is going to open your eyes. From tonight, from, I'm sure some of you have been experiencing that weeks ago. Amen? Amen? So if you're going down the bus route and you may f- fall asleep or something, and all of a sudden, you get up and you, you, you look around and the place looking at you. Driver say, where you, you ask the driver, where are we going? Driver say, we're going to Port of Spain. When you look outside, you see Gulf City. <laughs> you say, where are we going again? Say, Port of Spain, brother, Port of Spain. When you look a little further down, you see Mosquito Creek. Well, that's a lot of people think that they are on the right path. And there are signs along the way that tell them, brother, you ain't going there. You're going the wrong way. Now, repentance is telling the driver, driver, I coming off here. Even if I have to walk and go in the other direction, I am getting off. With or without your help. Turn around and walk back up the road until you could see the lighthouse. <laughs> and see the waterfront, and then you know you're coming into Port of Spain. Do I hear amen? amen? So as you do this seminar, brothers and sisters, people might be far from God. But as you start, get, you, you start getting closer, you start to recognize things. Oh, yo, yo, hallelujah. Yeah, this is it. This is it. I can recognize these things. And that's what's happening. All right. So there's a change of direction that's needed, that is necessary for genuine repentance. Now, repentance involves four things. The first thing about repentance is that repentance involves honesty. You have to be honest. You can't be playing games with God. Because every Trinidadian is, 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 a, is a lawyer. <laughs> S-C. Silk. Every law, every tr- we, we can explain everything. We can explain why we're removing stuff from the office, pencils for our trip. We can explain that. We can explain everything. So repentance involves honesty. The admission that there are things in our lives that are wrong and need changing. Honesty. Stop making excuses. Sin is sin. The wages of sin is death. And you don't play with sin. Hmm? Sin is like a little snake. The guy in the circus have a little snake and train, but you see the snake. And the snake got big stuff playing around his arms. See, you see the snake? Yeah. Then the snake starts wrapping around his neck. And he says, You see the snake? Yes. And all of a sudden the snake starts to squeeze. That's what sin does. Start off incrementally. But we've got to be honest. I have a problem. I have a problem with this or that or the other. It is blocking me from God. I'm ha- you have, we've got to be honest. Do I hear amen? amen? Humility. Humility is the willingness to change. And the awareness that we need God's help. Lord, I want to change. I need you. If you feel you can change by yourself, you have something else coming for you. There's something called grace. The grace of God. That's what's going to help us to make that change, to break those chains, to get out of those situations that are sinful. Grace. Ask him, Lord, let your grace embrace me right now. I need you. I want to be honest about this. I want to be humble about this. I need your help, Lord. Repentance involves renunciation. We got to renounce it. If something is not good for you, Hello? If something is not good for you, get it out of your life. Sometimes you need to talk to somebody. Sometimes you need clarification. You have a lot of your prayer group leaders, talk to them. You, have, you, have, you break up into groups, you have discussion groups and so on. Talk about it, be open. There's some people who are so close. They don't trust nobody. They ain't talking to nobody. Don't you listen and taking notes? Uh, listen, open up, open up. What sense does it make closing up yourself? Hmm? 
Open up and let the blood of Jesus come in there and cleanse you. Open up and let the love of God begins to, begin to enfold you and give you the freedom of a son of God. Do I hear amen? amen. Renunciation means turning away from wrongdoing. My neighbor says, if you show Monday, he saw the, the, the neighbor on the other side throwing fish guts in his yard. He says, no problem. We went to the pluck shop, bought two live chickens. <laughs> processed them. And he says, he put all this stuff in a bag. And as he's about to straight across by his neighbor, he, he heard the voice of the Lord saying, two wrongs. He said, all of a sudden, the bag started to get heavy. <laughs> Conscience. You have to renounce that, Lord. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And some people say, boy, boy uh, uh, God has taken advantage of me, you know, boy. People just do me things and I have to forgive them because God, God, God said I have to forgive them. Forgiveness, when you have to forgive somebody, it's a joy to forgive. A lot of people are bitter with arthritis, hypertension, and all kinds of diseases because they don't know how to forgive people. This one do me something in 1960. The other one do me something in 1964. And the same month, somebody has to do me something else. And we can re relive all these moments coming down the road. They're like a container of acid. Eroding at the sweetness and the aroma of Christ in them. They're dying slowly. Amen? Amen. Turn away from, wrong, from, wrong, from, from wrongdoing and decide not to do it again. Lord, give me the grace. I don't want to do that again. You know, if you, if you, if you get a pig and you give, you give pig a nice... Shower and nice hair comb and so on, put a little wig and deodorant and pet manicure and pedicure and so on. And that pig, you let him go in the yard for the, f the first pool of mud the pig sees. He's saying, Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Inside. Because in his heart, he's a pig. Hello. <laughs> so when, when the Lord changes our hearts, we look at the mother and we say, not me and that. I might look like a pig, but I have the heart of a lamb. Hmm? He gives us a new heart and a new spirit. Do I hear amen? amen. The fourth thing about repentance is, is that we have got to ask for repentance. Ask for forgiveness for what we have done wrong. Lord, I recognize that I've been doing this for so long. I know it's wrong. I take responsibility for that. I need your help. Lord, I turn away from that. But I ask for your forgiveness. Look, look, at, look, at, look at Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a man who was a tax collector. Hmm? When he met Jesus, Jesus said, come and stay at your house today. What, 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 what happened? He said, listen, if I have robbed anybody, I'm going to pay them back. Jesus never told him anything about that. But deep in his spirit, he knew he had found something great. He had found the greatest treasure of all. And he was willing to give up everything else for the sake of the kingdom. Do I hear hallelujah somewhere? Hallelujah. Amen. So we must specifically turn away from witchcraft, occultism, our world, brothers and sisters. There are a lot of occult means hidden. Devil will never come and say, hello, good morning. <laughs> With a long tail and smoke coming through his ears. And he's not going to do that. He moves through the occult. Occult means hidden. Before you know it, you're in trouble. So you've got to have your eyes open. You've got to be able to discern. You're getting involved in spooky business, have your palm red and all this kind of business. Stay away from those things. Renounce all those things. If there's anything that you're not sure about that you've been a part of in your life that could have affected you, Sometimes these things affect your family. You talk to your leaders about it. Pray about it. Renounce it and cut it off. So that there are no, there's no baggage that you're holding on to going on the road. But all you're holding on to is the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord, of course, is our, is our strength. Sexual intercourse outside of marriage. Adultery. Homosexual acts. Murder. Robbery, shoplifting, cheating, cheating in exams and business deals, lying, slander, drunkenness, using drugs. 
I want to encourage, I want to encourage folks, if there are serious sins in your life, go to the sacrament of reconciliation. Don't make joke with that. Some people say, me ain't going to no priest. But the Catholic Church looks at sin in such a serious way because this thing has the ability to rob you of eternity. For you spending eternity somewhere where you're not supposed to be, in a place of regret. So the church says there's a sacrament. You've got to deal with that. When you want to get married, you don't just say, well, girl, I love you. Let's go on that mango tree and get married by ourselves. No, it's a sacrament. You go to the church. And there's a way that God has prescribed for it to be done. Same thing with sin, especially serious sin. Deal with it or else it's going to deal with you. It's going to kill you, kill your joy, kill your peace, affect your sleep, interfere with your blood pressure. You can't correct your children because they're seen straight through you. You can't be yourself. You can't be real. It interferes with your prayer. Sin, sin affects everything. Do I hear amen? amen? So why are we interested in holding on to that? Because that's all we have known for so long. But now we've, we're coming into a newness. Coming into a sweetness. That we're willing to give up everything else for the sake of the kingdom and from the sake, for the sake of the Lord. Do I hear amen? Amen. Okay, so what can we expect? You know, there's a lot to be said tonight, but we only have just about five minutes left. About two minutes. <laughs> so j just to let you know that well, we, we talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. In a Catholic context, it's really, it really should be a release of the Holy Spirit because we will seal with the Holy Spirit at baptism and at confirmation. But I like the word baptism because it, it comes from the Greek baptizo, which is a process of dyeing something from one color to another. So if you have a cream shirt and you want to dye it into blue, you pass it into a process called baptizo, where you saturate the white, the, the cream cloth in blue dye. So it goes into the dye, what color? Cream. cream. That was a delayed reaction, boy. And it, <laughs> and it comes out, blue. it comes out what? Blue. blue. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 kind of slow. So when you, <laughs> so when you, when you enter into Christ, I don't care how, what color you go in, or what shape or form you go in there messed up, hmm? bogged down, tied down, with all kinds of sin. Some people have wrong sin, square sin, purple sin, psychedelic sin, expensive sin, cheap sin, all kinds of sin. But sin is sin. sin. When you get in there and you experience baptizo, when you are saturated in the Holy Spirit, when you come out of that and people look at you, they say, oh my God, look what the Lord has done. She's no longer the same. It's a different woman. It's a different man. Because 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, any man in Christ is a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. I'd like you to read Acts 2. What's going to happen? Acts 2. God deals with everybody differently. So my experience, is when I was prayed with for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, like as you would be prayed with on Saturday, I wept for two weeks. I cried like a baby. I wasn't crying because I was in any pain. I was crying because it was a joyful experience. Years of brokenness were washed away. Years of pain and disappointment were washed away. There was a cleansing. There was a freeing. When I was walking home that night after my praying, praying over, I felt as though I wasn't touching the ground. And I was, there was a gas station in Arima. As I was passing there, I just felt the Lord give me a new song. Come Holy Spirit and fill us. We want to be more like Jesus. I received that song on Prince Street in Arima next to the old gas station where the old courthouse was. Because when God starts a work, he brings it to perfection. So God deals with all of us differently. Suddenly, on the day of Pentecost, they heard what sounded like a mighty wind. For some people, it might be dramatic. For some people, it will just be cool. Because that's the way you are. You're a cool customer. So... All I know is that God is going to do a beautiful thing in your life. The word of God is going to come alive. Amen? Amen. Praise is going to become special. The mass is going to take on new meaning. 
Relationships are going to get deeper. You're going to respect and love people more. You're going to love nature more. You're going to get new eyes. You're going to get new ears. You're going to get a new life. Things that you never noticed before, you're going to start seeing it. People that you neglected before, that you passed straight, you're going to tell them, Hi, Jesus loves you. You're going to become a missionary. You're going to become a real disciple of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise be to God. So there are some obstacles. Sometimes a feeling of unworthiness. Well, I'm I, I not good enough. Of course you're not good enough. But when the blood of Jesus covers you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, there is nothing in this world that could deny you presence, entry. The veil of the temple was rent in two. Nothing can prevent you from becoming a child of God. John 1.12 says he came to his own and didn't receive him. But as many as received him, he gave them the right or the authority or the power to become children of God. Do I hear amen? amen. Feeling of unworthiness, forget that. Fear of making a fool of yourself. You see, some of, some of us are so dignified. Like, I'm Paul of Spain, you know, from Diego Martin. <laughs> I'm a manager. See, I'm a, ma- I'm a manager. I manage a lot of people and so, so, so. Forget that. I never see a manager going down in the coffin and the whole staff going down with him. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Fear of making a fool of yourself? I will be a fool for Jesus any day. Amen? Amen. Some people feel that like the personality will be take, taken over. You'll just take over your personality, so you, you'll be a different kind of person. All of a sudden, in Port of Spain, you'll be saying, praise you, Jesus. Praise you. <laughs> it's not going to be happening like that. God doesn't take over. He always asks for your permission. He asks the Blessed Mother for her permission. He asks you for your permission. What do you want to do? Are you going to praise me? Are you going to still be reserved? One woman says, one man says, my wife, um, she says, she doesn't praise God like that because she is not the demonstrative type. He says, wait until you get home. You'll see who is the demonstrative type. Some people say, all these gifts of the Holy Spirit, I don't want to say the tongues and all that kind of thing. People think I'm, think I'm crazy. I thought so. But I couldn't imagine a sneakers without tongues. <laughs> so it took me three months after my praying over to say, Lord, I'm sorry. That I, I was telling him what I wanted. But you see, the gift of tongues opens up the doorway to all the other gifts of the Holy Spirit. There are three categories of gifts. They are word gifts or utterance gifts. Then they are revelation gifts. And then they are power gifts. So God wants to open, up, open us up to a new life. But we need to cross over through this bridge of, <laughs> of repentance. Amen? Amen? So Lord, I want to thank you for my brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, I ask you to help them to make this journey and to totally step out of what they feel and begin to operate out of what they know. Bless this community. Bless this seminar. And let there be a mighty outpouring on Saturday of your mighty blessings. We make this prayer with thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. Amen. And all God's people say... And as Vincent said, uh, encouraging you to go to that sacrament of reconciliation. We do have priests available here tonight.